If you're looking at LogSeq and have no idea how to get started, this is the video for you. I'm going to take you through my daily workflow, showing you some of the key highlights that make it such a great tool for me, hopefully helping you to get started quickly. So the first thing my Notion geared brain hit was that I wanted to add structure, but LogSeq works differently. There's a reason why the top left button goes to today in the journal. This is where you add data. You just type in whatever comes up during the day and then use that at a later point. And that confused me tremendously in the beginning. One of the ways that I start is I start with like the morning routine that I have. Now I usually track that in Notion, but I've also started to log it in here. So in the day I'm starting with something like a morning routine and then I add a thing and go like, uh, woke up i'm going like awake and getting coffee and sometimes i write down how i feel and that it's just a way to get into the spirit of writing another thing i like adding is highlights and what those highlights do for me it means that these are the focus points for me that day so say for today i want to make a record to videos so these are the things that if you get those done your day is successful no matter what happened now day-to-day -day usage i just journal in this and that means that i just write down the small things and i add tags or hashtags to it now there's no difference between using the inline tags both work and it's just aesthetics on how you use it so i usually use the bracket method if i want to type inside the text and i use the hashtag i want to mark a block of text as related to something and how I use it then is that I just make notes on anything people ask me or like through Slack or face-to-face -face or coffee, whatever uh, works. So for example, say um, Bob asked about uh, Project X and when is it done? And that's like basic questions that you get and then I have things to it like, you know, Never. Now, normally you would want this structured somewhere because you need to find it back. And what works different with something like LogSeq is that you find it back because I marked it Bob and I marked it Project X. Now, how I work with that is that when Bob now later comes asking something to me, I search on the top, go like Bob, and then shift click on it, and it will open it in the sidebar. And the sidebar will show me any notes I made throughout time where I put Bob in it. And that's easy because now I can go like, oh yeah, Bob asked me about Project X and that was on the 21st of April. And this just accumulates over time because you collect all these small tidbits of information. Because it's also a page and it just shows you the history, like you don't do much with it, but at some point it becomes long and then you start typing like the summary in the top. So then the page about Bob has like a summary of the things that you collected throughout day-to-day -day use. So shift click not only works when searching, it works everywhere. So when you're writing something down, like Bob asked about Project X, you can just shift click on Project X to quickly see everything related to that project over time. And that's super useful when people are asking you about things and you want to give them feedback without having to effort a lot of time into it. So how do I deal with meetings? Now I used to add it to like my run book and then had to make like a date for it and split it and process it later. And with LogSeq that goes differently. I'm already on a date because I'm working on today in the journal. So when I want to add a meeting, I go like session about project Y for example, and I do a hashtag meeting with it so I can group all the meetings. And then inside I put something like attending and I say like Bob and me. And I used to think that I should tag all these people, but that doesn't really work because it just creates a lot of links that are, aren't very useful because a lot of people are like in the same meetings. Now, what I do is that if they mention something inside the meeting, so Bob goes to like, uh, it's uh, looking great. I mark those because those are more interesting. So I only have the people tagged in the meeting that are actually saying something or adding something to the conversation instead of just everyone because there's a lot of listen in meetings like weekly syncs and stuff like that. Now, if you just wanna focus on the meeting that you're having, you can always click on the first dot and zoom into that specific block. And that means that it's nice and condensed and you don't get like distracted by everything around it. Though I fold most of the things and that results into something that looks like this. And that makes it like already a lot less distracting and depends a bit on the length of the meeting if I'm doing this. And once the meeting is done and I put all the hashtags in, I just fold the whole meeting and I go on with my day writing the 
next session on it. Now, if you're enjoying this so far, be sure to subscribe because I will be making more Logseek videos in the future. So I'm filling this journal and then what? Because you're making all these tidbits and this is where the graph comes in. Because when I initially looked at something like the graph, I was like, what's the point of this dotted thing with lines in it? And I'm like, why do I use it? And that was because when I started, there wasn't that many and I was making manual links and it wasn't feeling like this. And then at some point I started realizing that this graph also shows whatever topics you made that you haven't linked up to anything else yet. So it becomes a bit like tending a Zen garden. I just zoom in and I look at things and go like, hey, what do I need to link up? Like what is interesting and do I want to be connected to each other? Say for example, like Bob was constantly asking about Project X, but he's not linked. So what I would do is I go like Project X, for example, and here I would say that let Bob is the manager. So I go like manager and doing that, and then I go back to the graph, you can now see that they are linked. So it's a very useful way to just look at all the notes that you made and find out whatever isn't linked and then add that link to it to really get to like relevant information. Now one link doesn't sound like much, but once you start linking up a lot of things, you start seeing clusters and that helps and it's one of those things that you don't initially get value out of but once you start using Logseek for a while and you start building these graphs you start seeing connections that you didn't have in your head and that's very useful now you collect all these tidbits of information but what's the point right because um, you need to do research on that information shouldn't you be able to like collect it somewhere and that is where something like logseek really shines if for example i would look for project x and i would open it then you can see the linked references and it shows all the information that i've collected over time now this is just a couple of days but of course if you're using this on a daily basis it might get very long and it allows you to look back in time and see all the things that were said about something and then make a collection on top i see for example that person a is involved so i could go like in involved and then add that person to it uh, and i also see for example here that is it related to project i and then i know like it wasn't related to project i so i'm not going to add that link to it but i do know that cats were involved in this meeting so i go like requirements cats and now all this information that was here is summarized in there and I can quickly reference it. Other things that really help is that using this interconnected allows you to have like this treasure trove of information that you can quickly access as I showed earlier when for example you talk to a person and even if you haven't spoken to that person in like six months you instantly know what you talked about last time you saw that person and can immediately jump into whatever they are asking you about. This is also super useful because in in business cases very often people are very aware about their own projects but they're not very aware that other people are not busy with whatever they're busy with so somebody goes and like did you look into that and you go like did I look into what and that's why I love Logseek in that case because I just type in the name of the person that asked that I can see whatever we talked about last and then I can instantly go like oh yeah I know and that's about this and this and that's what I found out this has like in the month that I've been actively using it for work already saved my bacon a couple of times so I can highly recommend having a system like this i skipped a lot of things that might be useful like linking it up to github because i wanted this video to be mostly about getting a workflow started getting you going without adding too much fluff to it now if you don't want to do it in logstick but you got all the way to here then i would definitely recommend watching my previous video where i have a similar system in notion remember you're awesome keep it up